contesting because all the evidence is being collected and will be presented in front of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not just record it, He will play the whole life in front of us. Everything will be played in front of us. And what a bigger shame would be that in front of billions of people, our life is being displayed. Our life is being played in front of millions and billions of people. <coughs> How much shame there would be. Today we commit a sin privately. Or maybe somebody didn't see us. But there, our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our colleagues, our friends, our roommates, flatmates, you name it, everybody will be watching that film what you have done. So, so much shame. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us again and again and again that that day will come. So, make preparation and practice. So, we have to all practice upon the deen. We have to do our salah. We have to keep fast. We have to do hajj. We have to give zakah. We have to abstain from sins. We have to abstain from thieving, stealing, adultery, fornication, pornographic scenes. Well, you name it. Rishma, bribery, backbiting. All these things we have to abstain and protect ourselves. So how are we going to achieve that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the following verse says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِيدُ So if you want to do all this, number one, that you fully accept and bring about the firm belief that I am your Lord. And only me will you worship. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ That only you will worship. Whatever anybody else says, we will not do. Only what you say we will do. And then after that, why yeah can I stay? And from you we will seek help so that we can practice upon the deen. And so that the practicing upon the deen will become easy for us. So two things we have to do. Number one, is fully embedded in our hearts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word we will follow and we will accept. Anybody else tells us to do anything against the wishes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will not accept. Because you are alone and you alone we would follow. So Iyaka na'budu, only you. That's why Iyaka is brought before the verb. Those who study Arabic, they would know <coughs> that when a, a maf'ul, the action that has been done, if that is brought before the verb, then emphasis is put. It shows that emphasis is being put there. Only you and you alone we would worship. Again and again we say that through every single rakat of salah. To embed that into our heart. To firmly see that into our heart. To make that the bedrock of our iman. So that whenever there is a contest between Allah and Allah. Anybody else apart from Allah is demanding one thing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is demanding from us. Then who do we follow? Only you we would worship and only you we would follow. So when you got that embedded into, our, into the heart, then the next step 
to practice that, that's the first step of making practicing easy. Then what iya can astain that without the tawfiq of Allah, without the help of Allah, we cannot move an inch. So Allah Ta'ala again is us is telling us, what iya can astain that you say that that only from you we will seek help so that we can fulfill the obligation that we are told to follow so that we can bring about in our lives those actions that you want from us so we seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again that is the purpose of our life to follow the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, my dear respected brothers and elders, if we do not, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a very just person. He will not do any injustice to anybody. What does that mean? It means that those who will do good will definitely be rewarded. Their good will not be wasted. It will not be in vain. What I'm trying to say is that those who do bad will not be let off. Otherwise those who, who did good, their, their actions have gone in vain. It means there was no point of them performing the five times salah. Because the person who did not perform his five times salah, he got off lightly, nothing happened to him. So what was the point of me doing my five times salah? What was the point of me giving my charity? What was the point of doing my hajj? If that person who did not even bother, did not even try, he gets off lightly, he doesn't get punished. So Allah said, Wala yadimu rabbu qa'ada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not do any injustice to anybody. أَفَنَجْعَلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ Now would you think that I will treat the sinners and the non-sinners equal? مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ How can you make such judgment like that? Impossible. I will not treat them equally. <coughs> of course, those who do good will be recompensed on the Day of Judgment. And those who do bad will be judged accordingly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we need to seek His help. Seek His help. Every after, in every rakat, that's why it's wajib that we read Surah Fatiha. And in that Surah Fatiha, Allah is telling us, Allah is so merciful, He even told us what, how to say, how to seek help. He gave us this Surah Fatiha. <coughs> even the words have been given to us, how to seek help. This is the way to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to practice.